uh, seminar tonight. In fact, this, uh, this seminar here is what every Christian should know, and it's to know about... He needs a copy? Yep, right here, right here. And uh, so it covers what every Christian should know about the Bible, creation, Christ, and suffering. And it's right there in the middle of the one. Uh, I do. Whoops. And now it's sections, huh? Okay, I guess I just have one more. Is that enough? There we go. That's enough for everybody? All right. So what every Christian should know, and we're going to cover uh, the deity of Christ. It's surprising to me how many people do not believe that Jesus Christ is God, that they deny that, saying, oh, he's just a mere man. And if they state that he's just a mere man, there is no way that he could have died for the sins of the world because God demands perfection. God demands perfection. And uh, anything less than perfection is just not going to be acceptable before God. That's why we have the word propitiation. The word propitiation means all of God's righteous demands are satisfied. And so we're going to look here today at the deity of Christ. Why trust Jesus? Is he the son of God or just the son of man? And uh, that's a very important question. And I hope that after this, uh, after we're done with this Bible study, that each one of you can say that, yes, for sure, he is the son of God. Uh, based on our, our position on God's word, that he is the son of God, that uh, he is God incarnate in the flesh. And we can look at all the prophecies foretold that have been fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the first verse that we want to look at is point number one, and that is the questions to consider. There's a lot of questions that we can consider, and they're all found in John chapter 1. So for right now, let's just go to John chapter 1, and then later on, this is all John chapter 1, and then we'll break off to some other verses as well. But uh, John chapter 1, and so you, you could sit down, Brother Kevin, and then, Kevin, Roger, I'm sorry. Why do I keep calling him Kevin? He's just so handsome, I guess. I don't know what the thing is, right? Keep calling him Kevin, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know, Kevin. I, I don't know. Maybe. I know he is. I just do not understand why. I just slipped. Yeah, Roger, huh? Is it an insult to Kevin? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So anyway, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And that is this. Is Jesus really God? So John chapter 1, verses 1 through 36. We can see these seven points. First of all, number one is the Word was God. If you look here in John 1, 1, the Word of God says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it's sharing with us the Word. There is the living Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, and of course we have the Word of God. And so this is referring to the living Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the Word of God shares with us that the Word was God. And then look at verse 2. Christ is eternal. If you look at 2, the same was in the beginning with God. The Word always was with God. He is eternal. Eternal past and eternal future. And then as you look at verse 3, it says, The world was created by Christ. Christ is the creator. It looks at verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So the word of God shares with us that Jesus Christ is creator, the son of God. So prior to his incarnation, prior to the time in Bethlehem of Judea, he always did exist. But he was born, as we know, physically as Jesus, the son of God in Bethlehem of Judea. So prior to that, he was creator. He made all things. And then look at verse 4. In him was life. So you look at verse 4. It says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. So he is creator. He is eternal. He is God in verse 1. And then as you look at verse 5, Christ is the light. Look at this. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So those people who are blinded, who are in darkness, they don't comprehend it. They don't understand. The Holy Spirit may be not working in their heart, enlightening their heart to help them to see who Jesus Christ is. 
And then, of course, verse 6, or verse 34, look at this, verse 34 in John chapter 1, he is the Son of God. So you look all the way over here to verse 34, which says, And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So John the Baptist points to the Son of God, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world and says, This is he. This is the Son of God. Verse verse 36 also says, The Lamb of God. Verse 36. And he looked upon Jesus as he walked. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And that's John the Baptist. John the Baptist. He was there in the crowd uh, ministering to those people there. We know John the Baptist had led many people to the saving knowledge of the Lord. And so he points to Jesus and says, Behold, the Lamb of God. Wow, how exciting is that? Yes, Jamie. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. the source of life, the source of light, and all he has to do is speak, and this world would literally fly apart. So it's all right there in John chapter 1, dealing with the deity of Christ, and uh, we know that in the book of Revelation, there's those four beasts, and one of the beasts is the eagle, which refers to his deity, and uh, refers to the book of John. And uh, John points out to the deity of Christ, Matthew refers to Jesus Christ as king, and then Mark refers to him as servant, a lamb. And then Luke refers to his humanity, that he's 100% man. And then John refers to his deity, that he's 100% God. And that he came and uh, to die on the cross for our sins. All right, any questions? Okay, do you have these blanks filled in? Okay, okay. But you're up with us now. Okay, all right. All right, amen. Yes. Okay, let's, let's continue on then. All right. Letter B. Did the physical resurrection of Christ really happen? So they're asking the question, and some people believe that uh, what happened was Jesus was just stunned. He was unconscious, and that he really didn't die. That they placed him in the tomb, he was still alive, his heart was beating slowly, and that after three days he finally revived from from the situation, and he walked out of the tomb. But, you know, honestly, folks, even back then, they knew what dead was, right? They knew what dead was, and uh, they knew that, that there was no life there. In fact, when he was pierced in the side, that the blood and water came out, which indicates that he uh, died of a broken heart. We're going to look at that a little bit more, too, and uh, that he truly was dead. He, he was dead. They didn't break his leg. In fact, that was part of prophecy. Not a, not a bone in his body was broken. And uh, they didn't break his leg there on the cross like he did. they did with the two thieves. And uh, we'll look into that a little bit more as well. So the question is, was the resurrection really, did it really happen? And I have lots of proof here. Romans chapter 1, verse 4. Who would like to read that verse? And then John 10, verse 18. I need a reader for that. And then John 8, 58. And then John 2.19. So the first one is Romans 1.4. Who would be willing to slip up a hand right here? Romans 1.4 is over here. Oh, oh, did you already raise your hand for that, Jamie? Okay. Okay. Can you get John 10.18 then? John 10.18. And then who would get John 8.58? Read for us John 8.58. All right. Jesse in the back. John 8.58. And then uh, John 2.19. Who 
Who would be willing to read that one? You can go to that one too, Jane. Okay. So read Romans 1 4, Jane. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Okay. So just by the resurrection alone. So a genuine resurrection proves his deity. So the fact that he arose from the grave, that he conquered death, the last thing to die is going to be death. And he conquered it. He conquered it. It's not dead yet, but he conquered it, which proves his deity, the fact that he is God. And then John 10, 18. John 10, 18. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Yes. So, Jesus rose by his own power, never to die again. It was by his own power, the Word of God says. And the fact of his resurrection proves his deity. And then John eight fifty eight. Jesse. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Yes, Jesus claimed to be God. Before Abraham was, I am. Even before Abraham existed, Jesus Christ always was, and he always will be. Eternity past, eternity future. Yes, Brother Roger. With what the scripture she just read, where he says, before Abraham, I am. Yes, and then if you go back to the burning bush, right? what does he say? I he says, am that I am. I am, that's right. So Very good. That, that also, ties that together. cross-reference ties it together. Yeah. It does. Roger, good. You, you caught that. John 2, 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Yes, John 4, or number 4, Jesus predicted that he would rise from the dead. He predicted that uh, in three days, destroy this temple. And you know, the Jews at that point, the Jews at that point thought he was talking about the actual temple, the temple that was there uh, built. And uh, they mocked him and said, you, you can destroy this, and in three days, uh, it took us years. In fact, they were still working on it. Herod was still working on it while Christ was alive. And 70 years are, well, it would be A.D. 70, A.D. 70, that it was destroyed and, and burned to the ground. But he was actually talking about his physical body. He was talking about uh, the fact that, that uh, he was going to die for the sins of the world, and in three days, he was going to rise. Yes? Yep, very good. I'm glad you're thinking. Um, you said in A.D. 70. Yes. Right, it was destroyed, right. yep. Right. Well, yeah, because, well, not, not, not really, because it was, yeah, because it was talking about, So, 69 weeks ended when Christ had the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So that's where it ended. And then the 70th week of Daniel begins when Satan signs the contract with Israel. So, so yeah, it's kind of it's in the midst of all that, but it's not quite yeah, and the I was just same. Wondering if maybe like the 70, 80, 70, when the temple was destroyed, this could be like a like a precursor to the 70. David, where, yeah. where, you know, death and all of that is destroyed when Christ comes back, because you said right. it's the triumphal, triumphal entry. Triumphal entry is so where it ended, yeah. So if he yeah. comes back to, re, to regain his bride, 
right. with I, I was, it's just my mind running, you know, it's like, it, it just, in my mind, yeah. it kind of seems to click together, but you know, I think right. that's why I was yeah. just asking questions. Yep, Dane. Okay. So, Chuck, did you get all those? Yep. Israel, yes, that's right. Israel is God's chosen people, yep. Or the Babylonian captivity. All right, let's go on. Letter C, did Christ really die? Did Christ really die? And we're going to look at some things here that uh, prove that, yes, he did, he did die. In Matthew 20, or excuse me, Luke chapter 23, Matthew, Mark, Luke. You have Luke 23, and it's verses 39 through 43. Okay, Luke chapter 23. Beginning at verse 39. Go ahead. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Son of God, save thyself and us, which he could have done. Yes, he could have. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same place? Uh, condemnation and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds but this man has done nothing amiss isn't that amazing that the man yep. knew that yeah yeah and he said unto Jesus Lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and that's something that he knew also yep yep and Jesus said unto him Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Yep. That proves that he, yes, certainly is the Son of God. That today, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And uh, on, on, uh, on Easter morning I shared the fact that, that Jesus didn't stand there and said, Well, that's a very good question, you know. Or, or he didn't say, Hey, let's get down off this cross and let's go get you baptized. Because you can't go to heaven until you've been baptized. He didn't do that either. He looked at him. You realize that that thief on the cross never got baptized, never became a member of a church. But he's in heaven today, not based on what he did, but based on what Christ did on the cross. And uh, proves, yes, that's right. He asked for forgiveness. You're right. So then Matthew 27, Matthew 27, yes? Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he, that's talking about Pilate, delivered him, that's Jesus, to be crucified. Yes, he was scourged. So Christ was scourged and beaten terribly. Now, if you're familiar, scourged, S-C-O-U-R-G-E-D, scourged, he was scourged. Now, 
t- this morning I referred to as Paul, and Paul was beaten several times. Uh, Forty stripes save one. If if uh, their being scourged was, was a very terrible thing, it was, it was close to death. And uh, they knew that if there was more than 40 um, whippings with this scourge and this, this, these tails, uh, one could die. Because these uh, to be whipped like this, there are several leather strands, and on each one of these strands were hooks and knives and metal that was very sharp and they would strike the victim, and those things would go deep into the skin, and then they would pull on it, ripping the skin. At the end of such a beating, they could actually see the internal organs of the victim. It it was a terrible beating. And uh, usually the Romans never, never do both together. If one is scourged, they normally do not crucify them. And so they were hoping that by scourging Jesus, that, that that would be good enough for the crowd and that they would let him go, but they did. So wh- what are you guys laughing at? Did I say something wrong? What did I say now? Fine. I'm fine? Okay. Okay. All right. So so he was beaten and uh, minus one, so 40 times. And uh, so so that that alone, many people died just from that. Just from that. And so, but there was more. And then number two, Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. Matthew 27 and verse 32. What does that say? And as they came out, they found a man from Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And that's Jesus' cross. Okay, number two, Christ was too weak to carry his cross. So I'm sharing proof that he did die. So number one, he was scored. Number two, he was so weak that he couldn't even carry his cross. And uh, let me share with you that that uh, the Romans had had uh, crucifixion down very well. And what they did is they had they had a post in the ground, usually called the site, and that post in the ground remained and always that was there. It had kind of a, a U shape on the very top of it, and then the the victim that was going to be crucified carried a, a, a post that was to be on top and fit into that little U-shape at the top of the, of, the, uh, of the site that was there in the ground. And it usually weighed about 100 pounds. So when Jesus was carrying his cross, according to Roman history, he wasn't carrying what looked like today a capital T. He was just carrying this one large beam that was 100 pounds. It weighed a lot. And Jesus fell to the weight of that which I'm trying to say is, is, we can clearly say that he was very weak just by the beating alone. And uh, so they requested the Cyrenian to, uh, to carry the cross for him. And then Matthew 27, 35. Matthew 27, 35 says this. You got it? Okay. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So, number three, his hands and feet were nailed to the cross. His hands and feet. He was, he was scored. He was too weak to carry his cross, and his feet were nailed to the cross. Now, when you look at most pictures, uh, talking about the crucifixion, many times they, they have the, the nail print in his center hand. Right here in his center hand. And by doing that, turn the lights off. Okay, so so by, by um, for him to be crucified in the center hand, first of all, many of his bones would have been broken because there's so many bones in the inner hand. And also, if they pierced him in his hands right here, it would rip through. The weight of his body could not be held and it would rip through. Okay, that light there, though, is back here yeah can you see it now is it still covered up so nailed n-a-i-l-e-d n-a-i-l-e-d hands and feet number three is hands and feet nailed to the cross so to be to be pierced through the palm of the hand would rip right through so according to Roman historians 
he was actually pierced through his wrist. Through the wrist. There's two bones here, and so being pierced through the wrist, none of his bones were broken, and it was very painful. There's a lot of feelings there, and lots of bloodshed from it. The same thing with the feet. If they pierced him through the center of the feet, it would just rip right through. The weight of his body would rip through. So they put it through his ankles, his feet on both sides of the site, and through his ankles, and piercing him onto the site. And they had it down to a science. The last one, number four, is this. In agony, he struggled to take each breath. In agony, he struggled to take each breath. So this is what took place. With the weight, when Jesus was on the cross, with all of his weight on his wrist, it would cause his lungs to collapse. He couldn't breathe. So he would have to push up with his feet to take a breath. And then the pain of his feet would be so anguishing that he would drop back down and his weight of his body would be back onto his hand. So literally, Jesus had to move up and down on the cross for each breath. Now think about this. He was just scored. And his back was like hamburger. And you could see his internal organs. It was a very painful situation. The Romans knew how to do it well. They would, would uh, his, his uh, knees would be buckled or just would be moved just enough so that he would have to move up and down in order to take each breath. So they knew how to do it well to make someone last the very long, as long as they can on that cross. It was a very anguishing thing. Yeah, Tuck had his hand up first. Oh, yes. That's tight. Yes. Yep. Yes. Norm. Yes. Yep. Be a blood loss. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They would die of suffocation from from uh, the lungs being pressed like it. Yeah. With all of his weight on his wrist. And that that's why, remember, and, and uh, I don't know if we'll see it as of yet, but when they came to the end of the day, they did, they did not want to leave someone on the cross over the Sabbath. So they went to each, each of the um, malefactors, and they were still alive, and what did they do? They broke his leg, right? Now you would think, well, why would that kill them? Well, it killed them because now they're going to suffocate. They can't push up any longer to take a breath. And so they suffocated on the cross before they actually died of the blood loss. Yeah, so very anguishing, very, very, very painful. And to think, that's what Christ did for you and me. Died on the cross. Truly, truly, he did die. And they pierced his side, and water and blood came forth, which, which indicates from doctors that, that it was that he died of a broken heart. Okay? Uh, yes, there are some that say he was just he was just stunned. It, it's critic, critic. Yeah, the high priest too. Yeah, they were paid that uh, that well well they were paid to tell the lie that uh, the disciples stole his body. So, yeah, but then but then on the other hand, the story the Muslims believe that everybody's eyes were blinded and Judas was actually the one that crucified and they didn't crucify Jesus. And the Muslims believe that and they still tell that lie. They, they believe their eyes were blinded, that God blinded their eyes and they actually crucified Judas on the cross and not Jesus. Yeah, Muslims, they, I've heard that story. Yeah, yes, you're right. Yes, yep, yes. So all this to indicate that yes, Jesus truly did die. He did die. He died on the cross that day. So was the tomb really, was it really empty? Was it really empty? And here, here's some ideas here. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 12. Matthew 28. 
in verse 12. We want to read just in a second. But let me give you some, uh, some uh, prior information. Number one is there's no historical reports that the body was still in the tomb. So historians like Josephus and others at that time did not indicate that the body was still in the tomb, that the tomb was empty, that he was gone. Number two, the disciples would not risk death to steal their dead leader's body. You know, here you have the disciples. What did they do? They ran off and they went fishing. You know, the disciples, they weren't willing to risk their life to, uh, to, uh, to uh, grab or to steal the body of Jesus. But then on the other hand of it too, so this is both sides of the coin. Number three is these men were willing to die for their faith. So after the resurrection, after Jesus Christ arose, they were willing to die in, in proclaiming and letting the world know that Jesus Christ arose, that he conquered the grave, that he is alive, that they saw him, and uh, they saw him on the road to Damascus, they saw him in Jerusalem, they saw him in the, in the upper room with Thomas, and, and uh, they saw him, and they were willing to die. You know, not too many people would be willing to die for a lie, right? But this is the truth. This is the truth that Jesus Christ... He, he did. He did conquer the grave that we might have life. And then Matthew 28, 12 says this. And then when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Stay ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Well, that there, soldiers were given a large sum of money to lie to lie. You know, and as you look at this, you begin to think, now wait a second, if that really happened, if they really stole his body while we slept, what do you think the, the Roman soldiers would do to them? They would have killed them. Yes, they wouldn't be alive to tell the lie. But just because they were alive and they told the lie, you know it's a lie. <laughs> right? It's not true. That he truly did conquer the grave. He arose victoriously. And, uh, yep, and the, the disciples were all willing to die for this truth. Willing to die for the fact that Jesus Christ is alive. We saw him and we testify that he is alive. That he is the Son of God, the Lamb of God who came and died for the sins of the world. So, yes, I believe the tomb really was empty. And looking at both sides of it. That he truly, he died. He died on the cross. He was dead. He did die. He wasn't just stunned. He wasn't unconscious. He was dead. And uh, we know so. And uh, later on, he arose. Norm, you got a question? Yep. Oh, yes. Yep, that's right. Yeah, even today. That's right. Some places they'll kill him. You're right. Yeah. Yep. And you know, like uh, Peter and Paul, when when they escaped, those in the those keepers of the prison, they were executed for it. And then also Paul and Silas, when when they thought that they were escaped, the keeper of the prison, he he was going to commit suicide because he knew that if any of them escaped, they would draw him to the center court of the community, and they would. They would publicly execute him. And so he was going to commit suicide because he knew what the Romans were going to do. So that's that's proof in itself as well. Yes, Todd. That's right. Yep, then executed him, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. Yes, you're right. Right. Okay. That does make sense. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. How are we doing? Any questions? Good comments. Thank you. Here we go. Number two. The facts to ponder. Letter A, the witnesses of the risen Savior. In John chapter 20 
and in Matthew chapter 28. We're not going to read all those verses. Christ first appeared, appearance was to women. Now, this is really interesting. Women were the first evangelists of the day. They announced to the disciples that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem. And uh, they were the first evangelists. And it's interesting because back then, women were considered property. And uh, they, they looked at them as a purchased item. And that they weren't, they weren't a helpmate to them. They were property. And so when Jesus appears before women first, I think that gives great testimony to how Jesus treated women. And the fact that women weren't to be property, they were to be a helpmate. And you probably heard the statement that when God created Eve, He did not create her from a bone from Adam's foot to be walked on. And when God created Adam, he, or Eve, He did not take a bone from His head for the woman to rule over. He took a bone from the side to be a partner. And so that is a great testimony to the fact that our wives are very special. And uh, yes, the man is to be the head of the home, but the woman is still precious and is not property. He, she is a helpmate and uh, to be considered that way. And so Jesus, when he first appears before women, I think is a great testimony to how God looks at women. Back then, they were considered property. And I think Christ was trying to say something. Hey, guys, women are important too. They, their ideas and their input to subjects are very important. And then we have Matthew 16, verses 12 through 13, the road to Emmaus. So Mark chapter 16, Matthew, Mark. Mark chapter 16. Would someone like to look at the next one, John 20, 20? I'll get Mark 16, 12. Okay. Mark chapter 16 and verse 12. Where did it go? There's 16. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. So that's the road to Emmaus. Mark 16, verses 12, and then 13, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. So he appeared before them on the road to Emmaus. And then John 20, 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Yep. So before ten disciples, Hiding from the Jews, John 20, 20. So there's 10 of them, right? Now, how many of the disciples were there? There was 12, right? So we know Judas died. That makes 11. So who's the 11th one? Who was not there? Thomas, Thomas exactly. Thomas. So here's number four. Uh, number four before the disciples and Thomas. Remember, Thomas said, I will not believe until I see see the prince in his hands and I thrust my hand in the hole in his side and so John 20 27 Jane are you still there then said he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hand and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing Yep, and then what did Thomas say? Lord, I believe. Yes. So, yep, my Lord and my God. So Thomas, he declares his belief in the Son of God that he truly did conquer the grave and he is alive. And then Matthew 28, verses 16 and 17, before a meal of fish. Remember Peter? He was uh, <laughs> in the boat fishing. And uh, Jesus calls him, and he dives into the water when he realizes who it was. That's Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 16, that says this. 
Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So before a meal of fish, Matthew 28 and verse 16. And then last of all, before a group of more than 500 in 1 Corinthians 15, 6 and 7. Okay, go ahead and read it. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After yeah. that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Yeah. Yes. So a group of over 500. So he was seen before all these people and appeared before them as proof that he is risen, that he is alive. So the question is, the witnesses of the risen Savior. There's many of them. Yes, Jane? What's that? Oh, we still have quite a bit. Page and a half, really. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and we will pause and we'll come back to this on Wednesday. Sounds good. That sounds good. There'll be some that will be here that uh, was not here before. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Powerful study, huh? Very important. Yes, Jesus Christ is God. He's truly the Son of God came and died for the sins of the world. And after his death, he was placed in a tomb and he arose again on the third day. Yes, brother. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's right. Yeah, it takes, I think, a whole lot more faith to believe that we are an accident, that there was a big bang and the world came into existence than to say, well, God created it. I mean, it takes less faith to believe that God created it. In fact, we know from today that Jesus Christ is the one who spoke. Nothing would be in existence without Christ. And uh, to realize that is, is, is astounding, that Jesus Christ truly is, is more than just a man. He is the Son of God, God incarnate in the flesh. All right, let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. I hope you'll be here Wednesday night, and we will complete this study. That's a great encouragement to come back. I didn't realize we had that much more. I All my books I handed. Oh, here's one right here. I do have a book right here. There we go. Let's see. Tur Why Trust Jesus? And we're on letter B. The blank of Paul. Oh, yeah. We have a whole. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize. Man, that we would we would be here all night. We'll, we'll end right there. And uh, be sure to come back. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that Jesus Christ is who he claims to be, the Son of God. I am who I am, just as he proclaimed. We saw the verse here today. And Father, we, we take that promise, we claim that promise as we worship thee. Sing praises to your name and study your word tonight. I hope this has been an encouragement to each one of us. And I hope that each one of us can leave the auditorium tonight saying, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He died on the cross for me. Father, I pray that this study will continue on, and that we'll all be back again on Wednesday as we continue this study on who is Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you are dismissed. Those on the internet, you can find this booklet on the website there under Florence Baptist Church. And uh, be sure to look it up and complete the booklet. You are welcome to do so. Lord bless.